Hi guys. In this video, we'll take a look at explicit and implicit equations, implicit differentiation, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly are explicit and implicit equations? The equations of curves that we have differentiated up to this point have always been given by a function. We have always had the curves in the form y is equal to some function of x. And say we pick a point on the curve in particular where x is equal to 5, then the y value corresponding to this is given by f of 5. Equations of the form y equals f of x are described as explicit. An explicit equation takes the form y equals f of x, where one variable is written in terms of the other. We are often interested in equations of curves which are not given as functions and are usually difficult to rewrite in function form. For example, consider the curve x squared plus y squared equals 25. We are unable to write this curve in the form y equals f of x for the following reason. Suppose we have, for example, x is equal to 3. The corresponding y values to this are y equals 4 and minus 4. And therefore, if it was a function, it would be a 1 to many function, which we've seen before is not a function at all. And therefore, the curve corresponding to a circle of radius 5 cannot be described by a function and hence of the form y equals f of x. Equations such as x squared plus y squared equals 25 are described as implicit. An implicit equation is an equation involving functions of both x and y. But we are still able to find derivatives from implicit equations. In this case, we start with our x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we'd like to end up with our dy by dx in the form f of x comma y. This refers to the fact that it will be a function consisting of x's and y's. We can achieve this with the help of implicit differentiation. In general, we end up differentiating another function of x and y, g of x, y. And in doing so, this is called implicit differentiation. So how exactly can we perform implicit differentiation? When we differentiate an explicit equation, we focus on differentiating the function on the right-hand side of the equation. For example, let's take the simple curve y is equal to x squared. This is an explicit equation and we end up with dy by dx is equal to 2x. However, we are in fact applying the derivative to the terms on both sides of the equation with respect to the chosen variable x. We take our curve y is equal to x squared. And then to both sides of this equation, we apply the operator d by dx. So we have d by dx of y is equal to d by dx of x squared. This has been applied to both sides of the equation. And then on the left hand side, we end up with dy by dx. And on the right hand side, we differentiate the x squared and we get a 2x. Similarly, we can differentiate implicit equations term by term with respect to one of the variables. So we take our x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we differentiate both sides of the expression. We can split this up on the left hand side by having d by dx of x squared plus d by dx of y squared is equal to d by dx of the number 25. In this case, we have chosen to differentiate with respect to x. In the case of implicit equations, this is an arbitrary choice. We need to use the chain rule when differentiating y squared with respect to x, since the term is not explicitly written in terms of x. We have d by dx of y squared. We use the chain rule and we use y as our effective u. 
And so we have dy squared by dy. And then we match up whatever is here with whatever goes next on the top. So we have a dy by dx. This is the chain rule. And the reason we do this is because now we can actually compute this dy squared by dy. This is going to be 2y. And then we multiply by the dy by dx. This is quite a nice thing because here's where we get our dy by dx in the above equation. We're looking to find this dy by dx for the curve x squared plus y squared equals 25. And this is where it comes from. This is generally the case when differentiating terms involving y with respect to x. Whenever we are doing implicit differentiation, if you end up needing to differentiate a general function of y, then by using the chain rule, this is the same as differentiating this function with respect to y, which I write as f prime of y. Just for clarification, that is d by dy of f of y. And then this is multiplied by dy by dx. And again, this comes from the chain rule as we saw before. The reason why we have this rule is because we often differentiate functions of y with respect to x. The expression for dy by dx is often written in terms of both x and y. So by looking at what we had before, we had d by dx of x squared plus d by dx of y squared is equal to d by dx of 25. So we go term by term. If we differentiate x squared with respect to x, we simply get 2x. And then we've just seen that when we differentiate y squared with respect to x, that we get 2y multiplied by dy by dx. And then differentiating 25 with respect to any variable is going to give 0 because 25 is a constant. And then finally, we can rearrange this equation to get dy by dx as the subject of the equation. And this is equal to minus x divided by y. And an important thing to note is that this is written in terms of x and y. Normally, we're used to having our dy by dx as being a function of x. But when doing implicit differentiation, we can end up with our dy by dx being a function of both x and y. When finding the gradient at a particular point, we can substitute the x and y values directly into the unarranged differential equation. This is useful if you are unable to solve the equation to get dy by dx in terms of x and y. For example, the point 3, 4 lies on the curve x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. And so if you want to find the gradient of the curve at that point, then we can take our differential equation we found earlier, which is 2x plus 2y dy by dx equals 0. And this is quite a simplified case because we can actually solve this to get dy by dx isolated. But in general, if we were not asked for the equation for dy by dx and only the gradient at a point, then as soon as we get an equation involving dy by dx, we can just substitute in our values of x and y. We have that 2x plus 2y dy by dx equals 0. x is 3 and y is 4 at the point. So 2x is 6. And then we have that 2y is 8. And then we have our dy by dx. And this is equal to 0. And so we can rearrange and we get that dy by dx is equal to minus 3 over 4. This does indeed correspond with the equation we found earlier. dy by dx equals minus x over y. And if we do rearrange and get our dy by dx isolated, then we can just substitute straight in and we'll get our dy by dx equals minus 3 over 4 straight away. But if you can't, then it can be useful to just substitute into the equation as soon as you get a dy by dx in it. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example tells us that a curve has equation x squared plus 3xy plus y squared equals 20. We're asked to find the gradient of the curve at the point 2, 2. 
our first step is to write down the differential equation formed by attempting to implicitly differentiate the equation term by term. So we take our term by term differentiation, we're going to do d by dx on both sides, and so we get d by dx of the first term, which is d by dx of x squared, and then we plus d by dx of 3xy, and then we plus d by dx of y squared, and this is going to be equal to d by dx of 20. Our second step is to write down the derivatives of x squared, y squared, and 20 with respect to x. These are the simple ones. So firstly, we have our d by dx of x squared. This is simply equal to 2x. And as we saw earlier, we have our d by dx of y squared. Again, when dealing with these functions, pretend you're differentiating them with respect to y, and then put a d by dx on the end. And so we get a 2y, and you slap the d by dx on the end. And then finally, the d by dx of 20, because 20 is a constant, is 0. Our third step is to find the derivative of 3xy with respect to x using the product rule. Again, recall that the product rule is such that if you can express a function of x, f of x, in terms of a product of two functions, u of x, v of x, then in order to find f prime, you do u multiplied by v prime plus v multiplied by u prime. And so if we're looking to differentiate this term 3xy, then first we can bring the constant outside and we have 3 on the outside and then d by dx of xy. And then we can apply the product rule with u equals x and v equals y. Again, y isn't explicitly a function of x, but the product rule still works. And so we keep our 3 outside, and then we have our x, which corresponds to having u equals x, and our v prime, because v is y, is going to be dy by dx. And now v is y, so we have a y, and then because u is x, u prime, remember the prime is in vector x, is going to be 1. And so you just have the plus y. And this gives us a nice expression for differentiating 3xy. Our fourth step is to rewrite the differential equation in terms of the found derivatives. We have our above differential equation here. We substitute in our information and we're going to get our 2x for our first term, and then by distributing the constant outside of this expression, the 3, we have a 3x multiplied by a dy by dx, and then we also have a plus 3y, and then the next term is d by dx of y squared, which we found as 2y dy by dx, so we have a plus 2y dy by dx, and then this whole left side expression is going to be equal to 0 because initially the right hand side was a constant and so we differentiated it to 0. And so then we can group together the expressions which have not got a dy by dx in them and the expressions that do. And so we have a 2x and a 3y that do not have a dy by dx in them. So we have 2x plus 3y and then the terms which do have a dy by dx in them are 3x plus 2y, all multiplied by dy by dx. And this is equal to 0. And so here, we can substitute in the values for x and y at the point 2, 2 into the differential equation. We've been told that the point 2, 2 indeed lies on the curve, and we can check that it does by substituting in and getting 20 for the left-hand side. But rather than rearranging its equation into dy by dx equals a function of x and y, we can just substitute in the values of x and y straight into here. And so by substituting in, we get 2 lots of 2 plus 3 lots of 2, and that is our constant term, and then we plus 3 lots of the 2 for the x plus 2 lots of 2 for the y. And this is our dy by dx term. And then this is equal to 0. Our sixth step is to calculate the value of dy by dx, and so the gradient, for the curve at the point 2, 2. 
2 times 2 plus 3 times 2 is 4 plus 6, which is 10. And 3 times 2 plus 2 times 2 is also 10. And then we multiply by the dy by dx. And this is equal to 0. And then by rearranging, we get dy by dx is going to be equal to minus 10 divided by 10, which is equal to minus 1. And therefore we have that the gradient at the point 2, 2 is equal to minus 1. Our second example asks us to find dy by dx in terms of x and y, where the equation of the curve is given by 2x sine y minus cos y equals sine x. Our first step is to write down the differential equation formed by attempting to implicitly differentiate the equation term by term. By putting d by dx in front of each term, we get a d by dx lots of 2x sine y. And we have a minus d by dx of cos y. And this is equal to d by dx of sine x. Our second step is to write down the derivatives of cos y and sine x with respect to x, because these are the simple ones. Firstly, we have the d by dx of cos y and again we differentiate this function with respect to y and add a dy by dx and so we have a minus sine of y and then a dy by dx. This only works when differentiating functions of y with respect to x and similarly but slightly easier d by dx of sine of x is going to be equal to cosine of x. Our third step is to find the derivative of 2x sine y with respect to x using the product rule. Again, recall that the product rule says that if you have a function of x, which can be expressed as a product, in particular u of x multiplied by v of x, then we have f prime can be found by taking u and multiplying by v prime and then adding v multiplied by u prime. And so therefore, if we differentiate this 2x sine y, the first thing we can do is to bring this 2 outside of the differentiation. And then we treat our u as our x and our v as our sine of y. And so we have a 2 outside, and then we have our x, which is our u, multiplied by d by dx of sine of y, remembering that the prime in this case means differentiating with respect to x. And so differentiating sine of y gives us cosine of y dy by dx. And then we plus the other way around, and so this time we differentiate our x, which gives us our 1, and then we keep the sine of y. This is our derivative of 2x sine y. Our fourth step is to rewrite the differential equation in terms of the found derivatives. We have our above differential equation and we can now write in the derivatives we found. And so we have our 2x cos y dy by dx plus 2 sine y for our first term. And then we have a minus for the next term, which is the derivative of cos y with respect to x. And that is going to be a another minus, and then a sine of y dy by dx. And then this left-hand side is equal to the cosine of x, because we differentiated the sine of x. Our fifth step is to rearrange the differential equation to make dy by dx the subject, writing it in terms of x and y. And so here, we're going to group together the terms that have dy by dx in them on the left-hand side, and push everything else over to the right hand side. And so on the left hand side we have our 2x cos y and then we have the plus sine y from the minus minus over here and this is all multiplied by dy by dx. And then this is equal to the new right hand side which is our cos of x and then we minus the only other term on the left hand side which does not have a dy by dx in it and so we have a minus 2 sine of y. And finally, we divide and we get that dy by dx is equal to the right-hand side, which is our cos of x 
minus 2 sine of y. And then we divide by part of the left-hand side, the coefficient of dy by dx. And this is the 2x cos y plus sine y. And this gives us our expression for dy by dx in terms of x and y. Our first step is to recall the form of the equation of the normal. If we let m be the gradient at a point x0, y0, then the form of the normal is y minus y0 is equal to minus 1 divided by m multiplied by x minus x0. We have the minus 1 over m since the normal is perpendicular to the tangent and the gradient of the tangent is the gradient of the curve evaluated at x0, y0. Our second step is to write down the differential equation formed by attempting to implicitly differentiate the given equation term by term. Taking our 3x squared minus y squared equals 8 and differentiation term by term, we get d by dx of 3x squared and then we minus d by dx of y squared and this is equal to d by dx of 8. Our third step is to write down the derivatives for each of the terms. Firstly, we have the d by dx of 3x squared. This is just going to be equal to 6x. We have d by dx of 8. And since 8 is a constant, this is going to be equal to 0. And lastly, we have d by dx of y squared. And using our rule from earlier, all we do is differentiate y squared with respect to y and put a dy by dx on the end. And so we get a 2y and then we have a dy by dx. Our fourth step is to rewrite the differential equation in terms of the found derivatives. We take our equation we have above and we put in our found derivatives. And so we have our 6x and then we have a minus 2y dy by dx. And this is going to be equal to 0 because the derivative of 8 is 0. Our fifth step is to find the gradient of the curve at the point minus 2, 2. This is because we're looking for the normal, and so we need the gradient first in order to calculate the gradient of the normal, which is our minus 2, 2, and then we calculate the value of dy by dx. Well, by substituting in, we get 6 lots of minus 2, and then we have minus 2 lots of y, which is 2, and then we have our dy by dx, and this is equal to 0. And therefore we have a minus 12, and then a minus 4 dy by dx, and this is still equal to 0. And then by rearranging this equation, we get that dy by dx is equal to 12 divided by minus 4, and therefore this is equal to minus 3. Our sixth step is to rewrite the equation of the normal in the context of this situation. We now have the values of x0, which is minus 2, y0, which is 2, and m, which is minus 3. And so, by substituting into our form of the normal, we have our y minus the y0, which is 2, and this is equal to minus 1 divided by the value of m, which is minus 3, and this is multiplied by x minus x0, which is minus minus 2. And so we have a y minus 2 is equal to 1 third lots of x plus 2, due to the minus minus. And therefore, we have that y is equal to one third lots of x. And then we have the plus two and the plus two thirds. And so we get a plus eight thirds. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.